this next section is going to discuss horizontal asymptotes. Now, as we discussed previously, vertical asymptotes are very strict. They are vertical lines, the graph approaches but never crosses, uh, it can go up to infinity or down to negative infinity, but it's never going to cross that line. Horizontal asymptotes, on the other hand, are a little bit more fluid, we'll say. So, uh, a horizontal asymptote, similarly, it is a horizontal line. that the graph approaches there are a couple of differences here though one is that this is what the graph approaches as we go off to infinity or negative infinity and the other difference is that it is possible for you to cross a horizontal asymptote. It's just kind of the trend that it takes as it goes off. Uh, sometimes this is known as end behavior. I will talk about that a little bit more in one of the later chapters. Um, but they, they, there are often times where a horizontal asymptote is just a line that it follows along. Uh, the way that we go about finding a horizontal asymptote is we go about by finding the limits. And we find the limit though as we go off to infinity. And if we have a horizontal asymptote, it will equal some number. It's possible that as we go back to negative infinity, we equal a different number or the same number a lot of times. And there are also what are known as slant asymptotes, which we'll talk about a little bit later when we get to conic sections. So again, horizontal asymptotes are more guidelines than hard and fast rules. Now the easiest horizontal asymptote to find is when we have a proper rational function. And if you recall, rational function, so we've been dealing with, uh, they have that ratio as that root word meaning fraction. So it is a ratio, P of X is our top polynomial, Q of X is our bottom polynomial, in which the degree of P of X, that numerator, and again the degree means the highest exponent, is less than the degree of Q of X. So in other words, we want to make sure that the numerator has a smaller exponent than the denominator, and again, that's the highest exponent in both cases if we put them in descending order. One of the nice things about this is if you have a, a proper rational function, then the horizontal asymptote is very easy. We have this theorem here that says that it is y equals zero. So, for instance, if we look at example eight here, we have x minus 12 over 4x squared plus x plus 1. And you can see here we've got an exponent of 1 on the x, an exponent of 2 in the denominator. That's our degree up here is 1. And the degree in the denominator is 2. So 1 is less than 2. Our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. This will just level out along the x-axis as it goes off to infinity and back to negative infinity. So the next case is what happens if we have an improper rational function. In other words, we've got that degree in the numerator is higher than the degree in the denominator. So same definition starting out, a ratio p of x over q of x of polynomials in which the degree of P of X is greater than or equal to the degree 
of q of x. And since we have an improper fraction, we can either do long division or simplification. And after long division, we will end up with some function that is now reduced plus some remainder. And what we do with this f of x can tell us what type of asymptote we have as we go off to infinity. If that f of x is just a number, a constant, then we know that y equals b is just a horizontal asymptote. And one easy way to tell is if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. If that's not the case, then we might have another type of asymptote or we might not have an asymptote at all. If when we do this simplification, we end up with f of x being ax plus b, where a is not zero. If a is zero, then you end up back in case one. Uh, then the line y equals ax plus b is what we call an oblique or a slant asymptote. And again, this is the case when the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the denominator. And anything higher than that, two, three, four higher, we end up with no horizontal or oblique asymptote. So let's look at an example. We want to find all asymptotes for this function. Now, there are different ways you can go about doing this. One way is to do long division. So let's just kind of review that real quick since this is a simple example. We've got 3x to the fourth plus 4. plus 4 over x cubed. So first things first, we ask ourselves, what do we multiply x cubed by to get 3x to the fourth? Well, that's going to be 3x. So we end up with a 3x to the fourth. We subtract that. We get 0. We bring down our 4. We can't multiply x cubed by anything with a positive exponent and get 4. So this becomes our remainder or we can write it as the fraction 4 over x cubed. Another way we can look at this, since we only have one term, this only works when you have a single term in the denominator, we can just split this up into 3x to the fourth over x cubed plus 4 over x cubed. So the 3x to the fourth is going to reduce down to 3x, and the 4 over x cubed is still our remainder. So this here, the 3x, is our f of x. So take a second, go back up to the rules. Which case does this follow? It follows rule number 2, ax plus b. In this case, we don't have a b, but we have the ax. That's the important part. So that means that if we were to graph this thing, and we'll kind of draw in a little grid here. If we were to graph this thing, what we would end up with is a, an oblique asymptote that follows the line 3x. So if this is 1, this is 1, then we know uh, we start go, would go through the origin for the asymptote, then we go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, uh, likewise down 3 over 1, and we would get this asymptote. You can also look at the vertical asymptote, we know we have a vertical asymptote because x cubed is going to be 0 when x equals 0. And so we have a vertical asymptote along our y-axis there. And then we know where the graph is going to be. We can either plot a couple of points or we can look at 
uh, the fact that this is a positive function. Uh, the leading coefficient here is positive. Uh, so we know that the graph is going to be somewhere up here and somewhere down here. Again, the vertical asymptote is important. We're never going to cross that. And the oblique asymptote, we are also just going to kind of follow along as we go off to infinity. Uh, in this case, it's not going to cross over that vertical asymptote. It's just going to follow and approaching it closer and closer to it. And so we end up with this kind of scoop shape thing stuck in between those two asymptotes. So I'm going to do one more example with you, and then I'm going to have you guys work one on your own. Uh, this next example is to find all of the asymptotes for r of x. Notice it says r all of the asymptotes. So we're finding both horizontal, possibly oblique, and vertical asymptotes. Uh, to find the horizontal asymptotes, uh, what we're going to do is some long division. This one we can't split up because there's more than one term. So we will say 6x squared plus x plus 12 under the division bar and 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 outside. And we say, what do we have to multiply 3x squared by to get 6x squared? Well, we need a 2. So 2 times 3x squared is 6x squared. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Again, we're going to subtract everything, so we'll change those signs. Uh, 6x squared minus 6x squared is 0, x plus 10x is 11x, and 12 plus 4 is 16. So we end up with that remainder of 11x plus 16 over 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. And again, the remainder isn't as important as this f of x equals 2 here. So we have a horizontal asymptote because we just ended up with a number, and it is going to occur at f of x equals 2, or if you prefer, y equals 2. So we're going to have that horizontal line, y equals 2. Uh, the denominator, if we factor that denominator, so uh, we'll go kind of up here above. If we factor, we've got 3x and x. Uh, we're going to put the 2 here and a 1 here, and then we need to make this a negative 5 in the middle. So we'll make this a minus 2 and a plus 1. That would give us uh, 3x squared, a minus 6x, a plus 1x, which would give us our negative 5x, and then a negative 2. So in this case, where this is going to equal 0 are at x equals negative 1 third and at x equals 2. Again, setting each piece equal to 0 and solving for x. So we have two vertical asymptotes, in this case at x equals negative 1 third and x equals 2. So if we wanted to check our graph, and again, this will kind of give us a guidance for how we would actually make the graph later. Uh, if you want to get out your calculator and see what this would look like. Again, always make sure with rational functions that we put the numerator and denominator in parentheses. So we have 6x squared plus x plus 12. And we're going to close those parentheses divided by open parentheses 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. And we'll graph that. And you see we've got this fun graph going on. So we have, uh, if you wanted to zoom in, you could see it a little bit better. Uh, we have this line y equals 2. So if you hit trace, uh, and if you hit, for instance, back quite a bit, you can see how it levels off. Your x values are getting lower and lower, but this y, you can see, is getting closer and closer to 2. And as you go off further and further, you'll see that it does end up leveling off to 2, or close to 2. Uh, also, you can notice here that you have that first vertical asymptote at negative 1 third. So notice that you go from like this negative 
0.2 is over here on this graph actually. Uh, you got the negative 0.4 and then as you keep moving along you've got this next vertical asymptote at x equals 2 you'll kind of notice that x you get like a half 1.7 1.9 and then it jumps over here so you notice these values are very negative and then you jump over here and you've got positive values so it's switched over to this part of the graph and as you move along you can see it kind of coming down from there so again here's your horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, your vertical asymptote at x equals negative one-third, and your x asymptote at x equals 2. So I want you to pause the video at this point and work out example 11, and then resume the video to see if you are correct. So this one was a little bit trickier, and if you were trying to do long division, because you will see you needed to throw some zero terms in here. Again, you didn't have all of those terms between x to the fifth and x cubed and nine, so you need to fill those in with zeros, or at least leave the space open so that you don't mix things up. Uh, you should have found when you did the long division that you ended up with 2x squared minus 1, uh, with a remainder of 2x squared plus 8. And again, if you need to pause the video here and look over any of that, please feel free to do so. Uh, in that case, we end up with a 2x squared, which is higher than that ax plus b. So we have no horizontal asymptote and no oblique asymptote. Uh, we could have also easily been able to tell that by saying that x to the fifth is 2 degrees higher than x cubed. So we're not going to have either a horizontal or oblique asymptote. Uh, finally, if you factor that denominator, that's that SOAP rule, take the cube root of x cubed, take the cube root of 1, put those in the first set of parentheses, then you square x, put it here, multiply x and 1 together, put it in the middle, square 1, put it at the end, and then the signs are same, s, opposite, in this case positive, and the last one is always positive. And so in this case, the only piece that's going to be equal to zero is this x minus 1, which is going to be your vertical asymptote. Uh, you do not get a vertical asymptote out of this piece. It gives you imaginary roots, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. You could plug it in the quadratic formula if you really wanted to check it, uh, but you'd see that you don't have uh, any type of vertical asymptote there. Again, if you wanted to graph this, uh, you can put it in your calculator. Again, parentheses for any rational function, so 2x to the fifth minus x cubed plus nine close parentheses divided by x cubed minus one and we go to graph that and you can see it just kind of goes off there uh, you can see this vertical asymptote here at one it's a little bit hard to see um, but you can kind of see it there if you wanted to change the window slightly maybe change the y min and max to uh, negative 20 and positive 20. Again, that's under uh, window. You can adjust the window. If you go back to the graph here, you can see how it shoots down there and then it's coming from the asymptote there. But we don't really have a diagonal line that the graph is following as it goes off to infinity. So this concludes the lesson on horizontal asymptotes. The final video in this section will discuss continuity.